Hi there, welcome along to another video with me, Jennifer Kirk. It's really good to have you along here. And today we're going to be doing a box opening review of some of the goodies that uh, I got at Worley Model Railway Exhibition. Now I alluded to some of these before, but without further ado, let's take a closer look. <laughs> Well, you've seen my Wally videos, and whilst I was there, I took the opportunity to pick up a few limited edition wagons from some of the retailers, which might have otherwise been a little bit difficult to get, especially if there's, say, like this one wagon that you really, really wanted, and they have a blanket postage rate. But uh, this is a particular uh, special commission from TMC, stands for The Model Centre. It was originally Trafford Model Centre. They used to actually be based at the Trafford Centre in Manchester, but they've moved now to somewhere near Gothland in North North Yorkshire. But this particular wagon, it was commissioned by them from Backman and it's exclusive to them, certainly uh, in the first instance. And I'm wondering whether this might be a bit like the Mark I horse box that they did, which they had exclusive to them for a number of years and is now announced to go into the main Backman range. But um, because these are a special commission, they're able to do a number of very eye-catching, very standout liveries. And they do them like the horse box in single packs and double packs. But we got there the catalogue number 38-853Z and it's the 22 tonne, well this particular one, barrier plate wagon. But the other ones they're all revenue earning uh, wagon liveries but this particular one stood out for me and I've got a particular need for barrier wagons and reach wagons for Grove Street Yard. So for me this was the perfect wagon to pick up and it's in BR olive green so you know what I'm like. If it's not pre-grouping livery I'm a particular sucker for the BR Olive Green liveries. I don't know why, but you see there as well, produced exclusively for the model centre. Now it comes in a standard length uh, wagon box from Backman, even though it is a long wheelbase wagon. And looking in there, it's actually about as big as you could get in one of these boxes. Now, um, I don't know whether it's just this one or all of them in general, but getting them out of the box, they're very, very tightly in there to the point where you can see there where the, the box has started to split because uh, it's so tight. Occasionally you do get this with uh, Batman wagons and coaches uh, and I think it's just the way that the uh, packaging is put together. In fact, <laughs> the packaging is sort of coming apart there. I've got to be careful not to damage the wagon. Ooh. <laughs> there we go. Um, so it's very tight in there. One of the first things which uh, becomes apparent once you get it out here is there's actually a separate bag of detailing parts. And I've not really seen these, especially on uh, Backman wagons that much, with the exception of maybe some of the brake rigging on the Southern Railway pillbox brake van. But this is all buffer beam detail, it seems, which I suspect if you were to add all these, you'd have to take the couplings off. So I've never seen that before. Uh, and really that would be if you, I suppose, if you were adding three link couplings or maybe um, if it was going in a display cabinet, I guess. First impressions of the wagon are very, very good. It's got actually a really nice weight to it, even though there doesn't look to be a lot of wagon here, being it's flat with um, no real options for putting any weight in it, but they've built the weight in to the chassis underneath there. And that works really well. I can feel it's got the kind of weight that really gives it substance. If we look on the underside, one of the other things that's very apparent to me is it's got the correct uh, stretcher bars between the W irons. And that's something which has been missing on a good number of wagons, which should have them, but don't um, in uh, the Backman stable. Uh, and it's nice to see that they've made sure that these are a part of this model. And they're made from quite a springy plastic, so they're going to survive a little bit of rough and tumble without shattering and breaking. We've also got the brake gear underneath, again, separately applied. And uh, I'm just feeling that, yeah, again, same sort of springy plastic. Now, 
uh, it says it's an air piped barrier wagon so that would be I'm guessing um, an unbraked wagon but with through air pipes which is probably fairly standard for some of these wagons the original design of these goes back to actually the big four period when both the London and North Eastern Railway and the LMS Railway uh, both used wagons of this design and um, the design was perpetuated by British rail I believe and they built more of them and they were used for carrying plate but also later on some of them had trestles for uh, oversized plates that would carry them at a, an angle uh, and I believe they also got used for some of the iron ingot traffic as well uh, which would have been very very dense but not particularly high so they would have just been arranged there in the bed of the wagon this particular wagon being a barrier wagon doesn't actually need anything in there so I'm not sure whether some of the other releases come with uh, representations of loads but that wouldn't have been appropriate for this one so it doesn't really matter that it doesn't come with anything. In terms of brake detail there I'm actually looking I'm wondering is that brake lever poseable and again it's one of those things where you can see the lever moves. It may even be etched metal, but is there a way of posing that? It's very difficult to tell. I don't want to break it. It's, uh, I'm struggling to see. No, I don't think it's posable, but certainly it's nice that the brake lever there is a separately applied detail so it's got the correct sense of three dimensions about it which really does add to the look of this uh, this particular wagon the chassis is particularly well formed there and we've got this good sense of mass and depth with all these gussets in there that are nicely done matching the chassis color but with the olive green of the top of the wagon correctly going through to the underneath. And I think the top part of this wagon, yeah, you can see down in there, is a separately made part. But there's, there's no gap between it and the chassis. I'm just looking around there and it fits perfectly. Um, you know, it's a really good fit. And you wouldn't know with a first look at this that there are two separate pieces because they fit together so, so well. In terms of buffers, they're very, very fine. A sort of, uh, I think they're probably metal, maybe brass buffers. They're very spindly in the, in the right way, but they're not sprung. But they don't need to be sprung, in my opinion. So I'm quite happy with that. Now the coupling arrangements, if I turn this over, it's got the same mechanism that the Mark I horse boxes had. And I think it's pretty much the same mechanism that you find on the coaches that Backman do. But the Mark I horse box was the first time it had been transferred to wagons. I know the VBA, the VDA and the VAA vans were a little bit of a nuisance because they had a little bit of a different way of, of making sure that they didn't pull apart on tight curves, which didn't always work. But these uh, self-centering sprung loaded affairs are actually pretty effective. So it's nice to see them brought to this wagon to help their running characteristics. The coupling itself is the Backman slimline tension lock into a NEM pocket and if the um, the protrusion of that underneath is too much for you to bear and you want to go for something like three link couplings it's fairly straightforward to dismantle the wagon and take them out so you don't have to um, uh, deal with this strange block underneath if you're not going down that route of using these couplings. If you do they're perfectly okay in normal use either keep the narrow slimline tension locks or fit it with a KD, whatever you choose to, um, to, to make use of. The wheels are three hole disc wheels and I'm just trying to look in there and see, are they a new design or are they, it's very difficult to tell. I have a feeling 
I don't know, it's difficult to tell whether they're a completely new design of wheel or whether they're just a common Backman wheel, but certainly they don't look out of place on this wagon and everything seems to be as it should be. Going back to the chassis, you can see they've really gone all out and this seems to be Oxford Rail raised the bar on the chassis detailing and Backman uh, stroke TMC have certainly made the most of uh, making sure that the chassis detail itself is all perfectly applied. Um, not that you would ever see that, but it's just worth pointing out that it's there. And then we've also got the Backman logo tucked away there, just to show you where the provenance of this wagon lies. The printing detail on this is nice and sharp. We've got a lot of lettering on this wagon and I've seen some of the others. There's some really nice uh, wagon liveries that they've introduced, ranging from the early London Northeastern Railway wagons right through to Topps lettered wagons. But on this particular one, there's an awful lot going on there actually. And it is all super sharp and I can't detect any smudging or anything where it shouldn't be. And even the really small writing, all of this lettering is nicely done and very crisp and very sharp. We've also got the wagon builder's plate there and that is actually too small for me to see with my naked eye, but I've got every faith that it'll be perfectly legible under close magnification. The shade of olive green seems um, pretty spot on to me. And we've also got, and this is something that's really worth noting because I've, I've highlighted it with a number of wagons, and that is the brown colour of the, the wooden floors. And in my opinion, uh, TMC Stroke Backman have got this absolutely right. This looks absolutely right. I think that shade is pretty good, pretty spot on, and uh, with a little bit of weathering that'll bring out all that planking detail really nicely. The crispness of the moulding is particularly fine and uh, when you, you look very closely you can see that all of this ribbing on the top part of the wagon is actually really, really thin. Uh, but there's no sign of distortion from the injection moulding process and there's no sign of it being uh, easily damaged either. It's really, really well done. We've got a representation of, I think there's sort of chains or something there. And again, really difficult to do in this sort of scale, but it has been perfectly molded on such that it doesn't look out of place or wrong. On the ends, we've got rivet detail. And again, they're really nice and finely done and really nothing to fault from that. We've also got factory fitted, I think it's the brake pipe, the air, air pipe on there. So it does beg the question, what all these other pieces actually are. I'm just looking there. I'm not entirely sure actually. Um, I think there's some three link couplings, but I wonder whether the extra detail packs are for all the variants of the wagons. And so they'll be, they'll have unbraked versions, they'll have air piped, they'll have vacuum braked wagons. So it may well be that what we're looking at there is a generic detail pack, which applies to all the different variants. Cause I, I'm struggling here to actually see, ah, no, I take all that back because when you move this coupling to one side, I can see just there what appear to be mounting holes for some of that detail. So that's all really interesting, actually. Overall, uh, I just can't fault anything with this. It's a really nice addition. It's a, a long lasting wagon. It's been well realized. And with the choice of different liveries on offer from TMC, it certainly is a winner. It wasn't massively expensive and they are all versions, as far as I'm aware, still available. So well worth getting one of these for your fleet. And they suit pretty much any period that you care to model from the big four right through to uh, modern an image of the 1970s and 80s so this will make a welcome addition as a, a barrier reach wagon for Grove Street Yard. I hope that's been informative too thanks again for watching and uh, don't forget to like this video share it too and subscribe to the channel and you'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up but until next time you take really good care of yourself and I'll see you back here again bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks go out to Anthony Kidson, Mark Anthony, Michael Churchwood, Mark McShane, Bob Threeton, Alec Ralph, 
and Anthony Hunt. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Knobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.